Now, no doubt, of course, the, the power failure in Ashford uh, knocked out all the karaoke machines. And here's a man almost whooping for joy because Chubby Oates, comedian, is waging war on karaoke. Good morning to you. Good morning, Governor. Yes, I certainly am. Yes, no karaoke machines in Ashford. All the pianists will be working and people yes. having sing songs around the gas fire. Now, listen, you're going to start this war of yours, this sort of military bloodless coup, and the campaign starts at the uh, New Ash Green Sports Club tonight, doesn't it? This very night, this very night, a uh, Cockney show we're doing with the real old Cockney songs, a bit of a sing song, and all the songs they can't put in the karaoke machine. Well, for example, I mean, you, we played Jason Donovan earlier, and I know it has to be said that Jason Donovan isn't one of your favourites. Jason Donovan. Yes, 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 yes he's a I'm pop singer. Sure. Yes, pop no, singer. No, yes. I don't know many pop singers. No, uh, Anne Shelton, I'm things are up and coming, girl. <laughs> yes, could do well. <laughs> a band called the Beatles have a little promise. Well, yes, but it's a bit new. <laughs> yes, it's a bit too new and fangled for us. So, what's wrong with karaoke machines? Come on, they get, they give people a lot of entertainment. They give people a laugh on the night. Yes, they they enjoy it. But wouldn't it be much better to have a have live music and people be able to sing any song they want and. People mucking it having, having it together. These electric things, it's, you can't have everything <laughs> electrified. Yeah, no, but it, it's, the, it's the progress, you see. It's progress, Chops. You can't go against it. It's not progress at all. It was all ready. It was all there. People could sit down, enjoy themselves. And now you've got to go out and... Well, it's not the same. And easy. No, no, no. I hate to see a grown man cry. You, there were such classic songs. I mean, when everyone crowded around the piano, they had marvellous songs with wonderful titles like Oh Me Taters and the Op Fried Fish. I mean, that was a classic of its day, wasn't oh, it? Oh, yes. I can't do my belly bottom button up. I mm. have many happy hours with that one. And I can't get my winkle out as anybody here got a pin. <laughs> <laughs> Why did these songs ever die out? <laughs> well, I don't think they did. I don't. It was the Obscene Competitions Act. <laughs> Come along tonight, and your ice cream ride will come. You'll find out. <laughs> now, you, you are, are you a traditional, a true Cockney? I come from Bermondsey. I don't suppose that right. does make me a Cockney. I think I was, and I was born during the war, so Bo Bill was well bringing. Oh, well, that's all right, then. So you're a true yeah. Cockney. No doubt you came down to Kent, because so many Cockneys came to Kent, didn't they? You know, for the hop picking and, and the rest. Hot Is that picking. true of you? Oh, yes. Well, when I was a kid, and a paddock wood. The Hot Pocket was the pub. There was a good pub, the Hot Pocket. Did they have a piano in the Hot Pocket? They certainly did. Yeah? I used to sit outside with the arrowroot biscuit. <laughs> <laughs> and me <the> Vimto. <laughs> <laughs> I had the little of the songs there. Oh, those were the days. Oh, uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> Why do you think it's died out then? I mean, you know, did you not just think that karaoke is the next stage on from the old pub piano? No, I think it's gone. It's, hasn't it gone from, from pianos to, to to groups, organs, synthesizers? It's getting more and more electric. It'll go back, I'm sure. It's, you see, even with this, with the power cut today, they couldn't do it. They've got to have the pianos. <laughs> oh, I like an old piano player sat down there, yeah. knocking them out. Do you play the piano yourself? Will you be playing tonight at the uh, sports No, I don't. I'm not very musical. No. Well, I was a... The tiny one I used to play on the lin linoleum. Is that right? Yes. yes that's that. <laughs> but you have got some people supporting you tonight, haven't you? Oh, yeah, you have a nice there. girl singer, Debbie Lee Jones, and um, and a band called Twice as Nice. Real good Cockney band. Mm. Bash it yeah, out. Bash it out. What about Chas and Dave? I mean, if, if anybody has epitomised Cockney songs, Chas and Dave have done that bit. Certainly have, you see, but they're there with, with the piano, with the mm. piano and drums. That's they're, they're doing it right. So what sort of song should we be singing then? If we're not going to sing the top ten stuff, what, what sort of classics from bygone days should we start to learn? Well, songs with a meaning. You know, songs that, uh, you know, have nice words. Mm. Like, you know, mersey dotes and dozy dotes and little lambsy divey. Something that makes sense. Yes. <laughs> but what is your favourite era then, if we're talking music? I mean... When, uh, what do you harp back to? What, what is your sort of musical taste? Well, I think before my time, really. Mm. Uh, I suppose between the wars, it was all, it was all happening. That's when they were. People used to enjoy themselves for a lot less money, and a lot less harmlessly as well. Mm. Yeah. So why has it changed? Do you think? I don't know. I think young people have too much money, and old people don't have enough. <laughs> You're beginning to sound a miserable old devil here, Chubby Oates. Oh, come on now, you know I'm not a miserable old devil. <laughs> last, last Christmas I wasn't. <laughs> no, that's true enough. We won't talk about last Christmas. You've done everything, haven't you? I mean, you know, you've you played the Palladium and all the rest. 
Yes, I've done that. I'm very pleased to have done that. What was that like? I mean, there are, yeah, there's lots of people who, you know, have been to shows uh, at the Palladium or even seen them on TV, but will never get the opportunity to walk out on stage. You no, must have been is, so nervous. It is something special, uh, a stage like that. Well, all those big theatres are, but the Palladium really was something special. Well, no, I had a very small dressing room, the smallest dressing room I've ever had. And I shared that with three other people. <laughs> what year was that? <laughs> um, Friends, that was the anniversary of the British Musical Society. It must have been three years ago now. Are you still a member of the Musical Society? Oh, yes, I yep. am. Because we, we were speaking uh, on last Monday, and we will next Monday, to Leslie Crowther, who's come into the Hazlitt in Maidstone and doing a sort of Edwardian's old-time musical revival. Mm, well, I must put that in the book and go and see that. Yeah, but, I mean, it's great, isn't it? Everything seems to be going a full circle, doesn't it, now? Because, you know, everybody's taking an interest in music hall, which they never did for, you know, 10, 20 years, and you hope taking the interest in the old daft songs that they all used to stand around the piano yeah. and sing. Yeah, the thing is, those songs have survived, haven't they? Uh, and even though the musical period was so short, it was all over in about 50 years, that whole period, right from the the chairman mm. to, to, to variety. And it didn't last very long at all, but people remember all those acts. Did you see any of the acts? Well, not the real old ones, no. but... Uh, well, as I saw variety shows, you just go to the Metropolitan Edgware Road. I saw Max Miller there, which was rather nice. Everybody talks about Max Miller, don't nice they? Nice to have seen him. Not. Yeah. Uh, what, was, what was so special? Because, you see, I don't know anything about Max Miller, and lots of people listening who know the name, but, you know, can't see this fascination with the fellow. The only thing is, you can never capture what he had. He, he made some films that were pretty disastrous. And um, his earlier records didn't capture a bit of the man, but you had to see him live. He had this wonderful personality that just came over the footlights. He was made for theatre. Uh, I don't think he'd have done very well in cabaret or working men's clubs, and I don't Why think not? he'd have handled hecklers very well. Um, he was a storyteller uh, with a very polished act. Was it all an act, though? Or, I mean, did you ever get to meet him? Did you? No, I never got to meet him. Do you, you must know a lot about him, though. Do you, do you know whether it was all an act, or was it just a, a sort of extension of his own personality? No, he was quite a serious man. Um, and he was quite a prude as well. Stepped on stage. Yeah. Uh, no, I don't think it was anything to do with the... Well, what, what made him special was well, just his charm, his personality. He just came over, and, and everybody felt part of part of him when he was working. Mm. But, I mean, that is exclusive to musical, isn't it? I mean, you, That's exclusive you can't to theatre. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Theatre variety, yeah. Because you don't get that contact now with, with television, for example, can you? Oh, no, you can't throw things at a television. <laughs> oh, well, you can. From <laughs> <laughs> the risk of getting electrocuted in this, of course, you're in Ashford at the time. Yeah. Now, tell us a little m more about what you get up to nowadays, because, I mean, you know, done the Palladium, what else is there left for you to do? What do you do? Oof, anything. Pubs, clubs, <laughs> I don't know, anywhere. Um, last straight play I did was with Hinge and Bracket, and the importance of being earnest. Um, Are you a comic, then, or an actor, or a comedy actor, or just a jobbing... Well, I, yes, I'm just a jobbing turn. <laughs> I wonder what you were going to uh, say for a minute, there. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> I just do things that come. I yeah. do a bit of television now and again. Or a few clubs. I don't mind what it is. So you're very good. You can cope with hecklers. You were talking about Max Miller possibly not being able to cope as well with hecklers. Well, is, is it working the clubs that gives you that? Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's a survival of the fittest. You, you can't let them get one over on you. And in a club atmosphere, when people are drinking, then it's not like when they come to the theatre, they've paid for their ticket, yeah. they're going to sit down in rows of seats very, very nicely. Uh, they're going to have no trouble at all, so pay for it. In the club, you're the intruder, you're in their club. But that must be the most difficult thing on earth, because, as you say, you know, they don't have to pay attention to you, they don't have to listen to the stories, and there's nothing stopping them chucking something at you. Have you had stuff thrown at you? No, 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 no. I've had booze hurled at me, <laughs> uh, but I've drunk most of that. <laughs> <laughs> so why do you think you survived? Because uh, we spoke recently on this show to uh, Jimmy Jones, and he said, you know, the thing is, you've got to take him by the scruff of the neck, you've got to take the audience by the scruff of the neck, and really let them have it. 
Is that your approach or not? Yeah, well, no, you mustn't start off like that. Some comics do. They start off very aggressively and mm. probably put the audience's back up because they probably like the heckler lines. And yeah. like that. But I'd like to, uh, if they start it, then I'll... <laughs> You'll then finish I'll, it. I'll, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> won't let them get away with anything. What do you think of this new alternative comedy, then? Because lots of people have... We spoke to Ken Dodd, and he said alternative comedy. The alternative is that it's not funny. What do you think of this new way no, of I don't think that's quite right. Then I find alternative comics are just the same as ordinary comics, but they don't shave. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, we've always had alternative comedy. Look, look, look what the goons were doing. Yeah. And they were pretty alternative in their time. There, there's no difference. If it's funny, then it's comedy. When it gets too political, then you can think, oh, that's a bit of a waste of time not to get involved in that. Who do you admire, then? As comics. There's not many living comics I've really admired. <laughs> <laughs> well, who did Benny Hill's always my favourite, though. Oh, still, yes. He's still yeah. my favourite, is Benny Hill. I know he's not everybody's cup of tea, but I, I love his seaside postcard humour. That's, 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 that's quite exclusive to Britain, isn't it? And maybe that's why he's done so well in America. Because he is cheeky and... Uh, that's, it. that's it. Yeah, it's all new to Americans, mm. isn't it? Because they never had all that. Yeah. They must be very surprised by it, but they've certainly <laughs> taken to it. Would you like to work in America? Because you could see, couldn't you, a sort of cockney going down pretty well in America, I should They'd understand me. Do you not think? I've problems being understood. In Darwin. Yes. yes. <laughs> oh, all right. Darwin <laughs> <Dartford or Lushen, laughs> we don't mind. <laughs> But uh, uh, do, you, do you not sort of have the yearning? Because lots of um, you know lots of comedians make it big in Britain. I think well the next step is to make it big in America. And they don't. Morecambe and Wise. I mean they, they tried it, didn't they? I don't think they tried it. I don't know. They tried it. They were Bruce Forsyth went there and all that. Bernard Manning went there. And mm -hmm. Bernard Manning's been to America, hasn't oh, he? Oh yes. He went never knew that. Yes, yes. But the trouble is we let him back. <laughs> Now, Bernard Manning is, is another one, isn't he? But he goes a little too much the other way. You're not blue, are you, Chubby, or are you? Depends on the venue, I suppose. Of course it does. It depends yeah. on the venue. It depends on the audience. I'm there to entertain them. Um, I, I wouldn't go over the top. I do all, you know, all that bad. <laughs> but uh, I will stick them in if I have to. Yes. <laughs> Probably will tonight. Do you think so? Is it going to be that sort Because it's open to the public, this... Uh, this Certainly is. Stuff, yes, it? the sports are in New West Green. In fact, if you live in New West Green, you're automatically a member, free of charge. Well, that's not bad, is it? That's well, pretty good. Going out there. Yeah. They've got a new system now where you get your membership number, quote that when you buy your drinks, and you get your divvy like the co-op at the end of the quarter. <laughs> it's going back, isn't it? It's going, to be going back about 40 years here. Yes. So it's going to be a good old knees-up by all accounts, isn't it? Oh, it's going to be a knees-up, yeah. There'll be a bit of dancing and there'll be the gags. And the songs. That's the main thing. Yeah, now come on, give us an example of one or two of the songs. We couldn't let you go without giving us one or two of the songs. Or maybe just yeah. one of the songs. Yes, well, well, I was fascinated, see. There, there's some marvellous uh, uh, lines here, like, a little bit off the top. I've never heard a little bit off the top. Off the top? I've never heard it. How does it go? Oh, it's a good old Barber's song, that is. Oh, yeah, it's a great old yes. yeah. Barber's mm -hmm. song, a little bit off the top. Um, we favourite, though. Oh, go on, give us your favourite. Yeah, yeah, of course, we're on. Now, one. Saturday afternoon, no I fancied luxury. So I went down to all my wrinkles, bought myself a penny with the winkles, put them on the plate, as happy as could be. When my old woman and 17 kids and all the family started picking all the big ones out, picking all the big ones out, talk about a fish face covered in wrinkles. When I saw my penny with the winkles, all the big ones gone, it made me brave and shout, because my old woman and 17 kids were picking all the big ones out. Hey! <laughs> <laughs> Marvellous stuff! <laughs> That is brilliant. Who writes? And why don't they write songs like that anymore? Oh, I'm sure they do. There's somebody they? somewhere writing them. <laughs> Maybe you've got somebody who could uh, write yeah, it. Turn out a pre uh, yeah, pretty good one for That'd the mid-morning show. It's not a bad <laughs> idea. Well, listen, let's remind people, what time does it start? We've said it's at New Ash Green Sports Club. What, what time is the kick-off of this? The kick-off, 8 o'clock, or when they sober me up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, August in that case, yes. And uh, how long will it go to the bar? Till about 11 or... There, is there a bar? Oh, there's certainly there a bar. You don't work at Club there's a bar, do you? I do like there to be a bar there, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so that's a whole lot. Quite important. Quite <laughs> important, yes. Yeah, a nasty operation the other week. I had to have a brass rail removed from my foot. Go on. <laughs> Enough of you. All right, so if you want to go along and see Chubby, and of course it's a waging war against karaoke, you'd be very welcome tonight at the New Ash Green Sports Club in New Ash Green, coincidentally. And uh, who did you say was there? It's Debbie Lee Jones. And, uh, Debbie Lee James, uh, singer, and the band Twice as Nice.
Excellent. It's been good to talk to you. Thank you for being with us. See ya. Ciao, yeah. BBC Radio Kent. Traffic and travel.